Hey everyone, it's Norm from Tested and happy Friday and happy new year. 2022, well, for my first video this year, I have a little bit of a show and tell as well as a quick build I did these past couple days. And of course, right in my wheelhouse involves a little bit of LED lighting, involves miniatures photography, and also a little bit of 3D printing. So of course, I've been obsessed with uh, tabletop photography. So kind of the catch all for miniatures photography, whether it's for my one six scale figures, one quarter scale, all the way down to you know, one thirty fifth scale stuff. Uh, it kind of requires, it's, it's, it's a fun way to do photography in, I guess, a manageable space. So I don't have a giant studio, uh, but I can have all the fun with lighting, with, uh, with um, working with post-processing of the photos, um, posing subjects that I can, you know, I can get all sorts of accessories for, um, and kind of work on photography skills that then may be applicable, you know, in the one-to-one -one scale real world. And in tabletop photography, I've been looking for a lot of different lighting options. So of course, I've talked about something like this before. This is the Loom Cube LED light. It comes with a bunch of accessories for different tints, as well as a snoot here. Uh, and I love using it with a tiny tripod like this. A tiny tripod allows me to kind of move it around the table very quickly, position it without having um, to set up a big light, um, and it gives me you know easy place to uh, easy way to give directional light, especially with a little spotlight like this. Also been a big fan of these aperture lights. So this one is, I believe, their MX light. It's white. You can change the uh, color temperature. It gets really bright, and it works as a kind of a like a nice big key light um, that, of course, has a quarter twenty mount. And I could put it on a tiny stand like this and move it around. Uh, but something I, I haven't had a lot of luck finding is a way to get a light not maybe positioned in front of a figure, or the side of a figure, but maybe on top of a figure, um, kind of the equivalent of you know big studio light. If you had a truss system and you know china balls above in a big studio, what could I do for that in the miniatures world? And I've you know experimented with ways to have arm mounts and goosenecks that you can clamp to a table. Uh, give you a little bit of versatility, but they don't have the versatility of like a little tripod that I can move around. Well, enter something that Matthews, the makers of the C-Stand, the Century Stand, the original foldable leg C-Stand, uh, they put out this last year, which like they must have been thinking of me when they made this. It's a mini C-Stand that not only does it look like a C-Stand and they made it to commemorate the 50th anniversary of their first C-Stand, uh, but it's metal and it's fully a working C-Stand. It's functional as well. So of course you got, let's see, you got here the three fold-out legs. Of course, you can lock them into place. Uh, the largest leg, you can also raise it, so you can put it on top of, you know, like the curb or a step or you know, an apple box, right, for better stability. So it works that way. Uh, this is five inches, so a full size C stand, 40 inches. Uh, the normal, I guess, mini C stands that you see on sets are 20 inches, the half size ones. Uh, I guess you call this the micro. They call it the mini, but I guess you can call it the micro C stand, five inches, so about one eighth scale, but I don't think scale really matters here, uh, but it does have, um, yep, it can extend up, and let's extend that second level up here, it does disconnect, so up to, that looks like, like 10 inches or so, and then, yes, they also have gobo heads and even a gobo arm, so two gobo heads that I can attach and remove arms or if I have my own, you know, um, rods I can put in here. You can fit up to, I believe, 3 8 inch uh, diameter rod. Um, or if I want to use their gobo head and gobo arm, uh, this is, I believe, about 4 inches um, and a second gobo head here as well. So, you know, you can put this in your desk and it absolutely serves as this delightful novelty as a representation of the C-Stand. Let me make sure the head is above the largest leg here. 
gobo heads, uh, the screws here are to the right, of course, and you can just appreciate a piece of, you know, grip history, uh, or you can actually use it for some tabletop photography. Uh, and Matthews does also have this, uh, they call these dots, which are like little mini circular silks. So if I put this in this gobo head, and this is just a small diameter rod here. There it goes. Uh, you know, you can use it as like a little silk, a scrim, right? You can do a little bit of diffusing of the lights, create a little softer shadows on your subject's faces, uh, bright light farther away, or if you're in a small space, a bright light with a silk to help really diffuse it. Um, but I wanted to create my own light because I have in my supply box some LED lights and a uh, year and a half ago I did um, a review of one of those kind of um, not necessarily ring lights they're edge lights I guess you could call them they're circular lights uh, and if you disassemble them uh, they're essentially just LED lights around a ring that um, that bounce out and uh, go through a diffusing panel that create a really nice flat uh, light or nice flat panel with soft light that comes out of it. Ooh, words, new year. Uh, so I have this LED strip here and this is just a five volt COB LED strip. So gets pretty bright, but very dense packing of the LEDs, uh, which is nice, uh, fixed color temperature. So they have this in uh, 4,000 or 6,000 Kelvin, super cheap, it's like 10 bucks. Best part about this is five volts, so power over USB, as well as a built-in dimmer and on-off switch. So you don't have to you know, kind of wire in your own dimmer. So it's kind of a nice all-in-one package. And I thought this would be perfect for making my own little flapjack light panel. So I went into Tinkercad and whipped up this for my 3D printer. Uh, it's a 5.5 diameter ring here, and the height of this is the exact height or the exact uh, thickness of uh, the LED strip. So it says right on the package, this is eight millimeters or 0.31 inches. Uh, and so right into uh, Tinkercad, I just made something that was exactly eight millimeters tall. Uh, it's a little bit bigger. Like I gave it like, you know, like a, a quarter of a, like a like, like 25 microns more, uh, just to give it some extra buffer space. Uh, also designed in a little sleeve here, uh, so that when I tape that ring light around, the power cord can go fit through this sleeve and then be held in place by this brass rod. Uh, again, cheap brass rod, you can get anywhere. I believe this one is about five and a half millimeters in diameter. Uh, it's gonna perfectly fit this USB cable. And the idea is that rod fits in this sleeve uh, and the lights go around this ring. Uh, so that's exactly what I did. Had to, of course, um, detach the, uh, the power cable so that I could wire it through because it does have the USB plug as well as this controller, which wasn't going to fit through that brass rod. Uh, and um, once I had everything assembled, this is what I ended up with. So this is my little flapjack lighting panel. So that same brass rod, I have the light uh, USB cable coming out of it, uh, and then I backed it with some pieces of acrylic uh, just to make it look a little nicer, and then also uh, um, 3D printed and designed these little brackets to hold the, uh, the acrylic as well as the diffusing panel in place. And so this is actually just pressure fit right here. And you can see on the inside, I have that COB LED strip, uh, and then on the acrylic um, backing panel, I also glued in some reflective uh, cardstock. So some mirrored cardstock to help the light push it out a little more. I know those uh, flapjack panels have a little bit, actually have some, um, some special fancy uh, reflective material to help really push that light, but this mirrored cardstock I thought would do just well. Um, 
And then on the outside here, this is again bracketed with a frosted acrylic uh, panel. Also put in a little bit of vellum for extra diffusion. Uh, and I like that I also made this modular so it just press fits on top. If you wanna make something with a different tint with uh, more diffusion, uh, less diffusion, not use this at all, uh, I have some versatility in the future. Um, but let's plug this in to take a look. So again, right off of USB power and power button and there you go, a little bit of a light. So let me turn off actually my light here and you can see that I have pretty nice diffused light coming out from the LED strips in this little ring light form factor that's held up. Uh, and then if I use the diffusion panel, then that just dims a little bit more of a softer light. It's not super bright, but I think it totally works as either a little desk light or for figure photography, uh, maybe a fill light. Uh, and I can dim it so it gets real nice and dim or brighten it up. Um, of course, Let's see how this fits with the C-Stand. Oh, this is super, super cool. I can't believe how well this turned out. Um, it works exactly as I hoped as a versatile, maneuverable, and practical little light panel that was just really simple and cheap to assemble uh, and works really well with this Matthews Mini C-Stand. Again, it's just some COB LED lights off the shelves, uh, a brass rod, a few 3D printed parts, um, and some backing, which could be acrylic, could be cardstock, uh, some vellum diffusion if you want it, uh, but completely optional. And I'll even put up the STL files um, for this housing on Thingiverse. Everything, all the parts uh, I mentioned linked in the description and comments below. And well, of course, now it's time for a little bit of a photo session. Uh, and this is a little bit of a two-parter video because we're gonna get Adam one of these C-stands. He's really interested in building something for it as well. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but until next time, thank you for watching. I'm Norm, I'll see you then.